Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, I think we're recording as well as we are screen sharing together right now. Um, so, <laughs> hello everyone and uh, welcome to yet another um, Chaos Asia community meeting. Today, I have actually not uh, edited the date on the screen sharing um, bit. Uh, so, it's May uh, 30th, 20, uh, 2024. And uh, I still apparently have kept it at May 16th, but um, uh, May 30, it's May 30th today. And um, uh, like we have every uh, alternate week, uh, we have this meeting at uh, 8 a.m. Indian Standard Time on Thursday. So I don't know how that translates to other uh, time zones. Uh, you can check out the local time in the link provided in the agenda talk. But um, just want to do a quick pulse check. How's everyone doing? I know there are only the three of us. So I uh, just want to do a quick pulse check. How's everyone doing? Let me know, start. So, uh, Manul, uh, uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm fine. It's early morning. <laughs> What is yeah. Just two days away from the weekend. <laughs> yeah. There's something we which everybody... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll quickly get to the agenda. Uh so firstly, uh I know that I posted this on Slack as well, but um I attended the last Ospometrics call on May 2nd, which was the last time we had uh last last time i think or was it may 16th i'm not sure but uh i've attended the last ospometrics call uh for floating the message around uh, metric standardization involving people from asia right um uh, like uh fukuchi san and kuata san from uh japan and a couple of others who've also shown interest from china and other areas so um a monthly call governed by Chatham House rules is uh, something that uh, they said we will be exploring as an option going forward. Uh, I don't know when the tentative started for this is, but I'm going to ask that in today's call. And uh, secondly, uh, specific to the um, uh, folks who've shown interest in this area, right, um, for metric standardization efforts, um, Matt uh, and I are actually chatting about how to streamline this process further uh, since I'm actually leading the initiative as well. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the update of what I have got with uh, respect to the OSPOMET, not just the OSPOMETRICS, but the metric standardization efforts that uh, we're currently driving. Uh, gonna pause there for a bit and see if anyone has any questions. Oh yeah, Roland, go ahead, please. Yeah, just uh, running with the. I suppose the um, the office uh, uh, open source open source program office. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, like they've done with the. Uh, was it um, Sloan Foundation has has uh, built some built some funding around that in the states or something like that. <clears throat> No, actually, uh, so there's the to-do group under the Linux Foundation uh, that's actually spearheading this call, right? Uh, not this call specifically, this initiative uh, across... Um, okay, I uh, see. Countries. I see. Yeah. So that's... Um, so OSPO, that to-do group has a working group that collaborates with the chaos metrics bits here. And in general, they get together every alternate Thursday at the same time that we have, like, um, not at the same time. Uh, Thursday uh, at 9.30 p.m. IST is when they meet. Uh, and it's it's like on the same day. So we have these meetings on the same day. So I happened to attend one last time around to check how um, the Japanese folks could get involved. And uh, they said that we could explore a Chatham House uh, meeting. Um, 
right, uh, okay. every, all, every month so that people could get involved. That's that's helpful. That's helpful to know. Thanks. Yep. Uh, and uh, further to that, uh, there's also this thing that uh, uh, we're going to start with the standardization efforts. Uh, I know we've been talking about this quite a lot, but we're going to start with it. I've actually reached out to um, the Joint Development Foundation, which is also under the Linux Foundation um and a bunch of other people i think i've i've included that as an update but this is also a part of the standardization effort so we are aiming for a uh, documentation based standardization uh when it comes to the iso iic and uh, we we're, we're doing that but uh, like there's a whole lot of unknown unknowns that uh, we have absolutely no knowledge about so uh, i'm like touching base with various uh, uh, stakeholders who've done this previously, like the open chain folks and uh, people who spearhead this at like the Linux Foundation level to understand that. So if anyone else wants to be involved in this, please let me know. Uh, we're always welcoming people. Um, and it's not specific to just OSPO. Again, like I mentioned OSPO metrics call because that was the call we floated this idea in, but metrics are being developed for uh, everyone across the open source ecosystem. So it's not specific to OSPOS. Um, uh, just that, you know, since there's a lot of um, interest from the OSPO side of things to develop these metrics so that they can convey the value prop better uh, is the reason why, you know, the this was brought up at a call, uh, brought up on that call earlier on. So yeah, that's, that's the update that I had. Um, any questions around that again? Like before I move on to the next agenda item. Manuel, do you have a question? Because I had a question I thought I'd ask you first. Uh, no, no, not from my thing. Um when when that when you've been hear, hearing about all these metrics from different places, are they usually quantitative or do they actually have any qualitative metrics involved in there as well? So I can show you the metrics that um uh are there currently and uh, so these are the metrics that we are uh, we have currently and um, actually speaking we are uh, looking at standardizing the metric model first as opposed to uh, the metrics themselves so um I don't remember. There are five metric models that we are, uh, I think, we are looking at standardizing first. I can send the list that we are looking to standardize based on the kind of uh, feedback we've received so far. So there are five among these. I think one of them is community service and support uh, that we're looking to. So this, this is one of them, I believe. And uh, yeah, so... These are the metrics in the metric model. So I am, um, to, to your question, to your point, I uh, definitely think there's a lot of quantitative metrics here because, um, and I'm not sure if there are any qualitative ones, uh, primarily because we're trying to convey the health um, and like the value prop back to people who are, you know, taking these decisions of OSS involvement. I'm not saying that qualitative metrics are not involved, uh, but uh, so far I think the um, focus is on building out a model uh, or focus on building on models that actually give you the quantitative value you can tie into the business value. My, 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 my sort of general feedback is that when you're working with people who are in STEM, they tend it can be very easy for them to forget about the qualitative side. And I think from a diversification point of view, I'd be really interested in in knowing how many humanities researchers who've worked around impact, which I think is one of the reasons for these metrics for funding and everything else like that. I'd be really interested to to know what the how diverse the community is in terms of, is everyone coming from the tech point of view or how much reaching out have we done to the humanities uh, type of people? I'm, I'm unclear, I'm, I'm not sure, but 
the impression that I've gotten since I've been around is that it's very, very heavily slanted and there could be an opportunity to. Uh, I'd be really curious about the conversations of what a qualitative lens would look like across some of these metrics, actually. So by qualitative, what are the exact, uh, you know, what are some suggestions that you can think of? Because uh, when you said uh, diversity and like stuff like that, we have a, a badging initiative which looks at projects and com um, events from like the diversity perspective as to uh, how you can be more inclusive and whether or not, you know, you have these various things. So let me just show you. Yeah, um, I've, I've had a look yeah. um, and you made some comments about it. I read a little report about, you know, my opinions on the DEI stuff. But when I mean qualitative, I mean interview-based uh, with a mix of structured and unstructured questions. And then having one or two people reviewing the answers uh, and building an argument, an argument-based approach for whether, you know, it could be argued based off the interviews that we've had with various stakeholders that this metric of uh, inclusion or this metric of community, whatever, yep. is high or community engagement is high, as opposed to a quantitative survey based or, or numbers based uh, focus. So I, I'm, I'm, uh I'm, I'm, Surprised if they, I would be unsurprised if there weren't, if there were many or any qualitative things, but I could see how it could be very, very beneficial. Yeah. So, um, the <laughs> badging bit, I can speak to. No, no, no. I can speak to uh, the badging bit because it's uh, it's not a survey exactly. It's a uh, whole question and answer. Although I don't think there are unstructured questions on there. Um. So. Again, that ties into the metrics we have. Um, and it's um, I can show you one of those here. Um, the issue with the the badging is that it's doing it relative to the person in charge. So, no, it's two people who review it. That's the thing. Like, it's it's no, a no, whole no. question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my my meaning is when the the person who's writing it down. Um, okay. So who who fills out the 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 survey and adds the other things in there? They're they're coming from the person who you know someone on the committee. Yeah, or yeah. Someone yeah, committee. yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Actually, yeah. We, you know, when you're asking, when we do our um, micro grants to increase inclusion, that sort of stuff, we're asking people, what, how are we doing? How are we being inclusive enough? Are we being accessible enough? What things would we change? Because it's actually the people who are the most marginalized who know what they need uh, and what, what they're seeing. And there's a, I think that's the biggest disconnect um, around that. And I think a qualitative approach, like for example, would be, you know, have you done any qualitative uh, interviews with people highly marginalized? That's not part of the, you know, the discussion, but even putting that to the side, just some of the metrics that we have in chaos, it all seems to be very driven around um, the numbers, yeah. And I think that's just showing the more than likely, if that's the case, it's showing the lack of diversity in the people who are helping. And I think it'd be really beneficial for the community to reach out to humanities researchers and uh linguists and people who do discourse analysis um because i think that would allow you to uh, uh have a wider variety and diversity of of metrics that you may not have been able to do in other ways i'll take the feedback to elizabeth and see what we can do about it uh again i'm not a part of the badging uh like i'm part of the badging project but i'm not part of like the <laughs> meetings themselves yeah just be clear, that was more, this is more general than badging. This is like metrics just in general. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. again, like the badging is directly affected by the metrics that we actually put out, right? Like whatever badges we assign to either events or projects, they are directly, um, 
like the assessment is based on the metrics that we have. So um, to your point, yes, I agree. But again, there's going to be a lot of, I don't know, uh, survey on how it's collected and how it's visualized because that's, I think, another important thing. So I will take your feedback to uh, Elizabeth after the meeting. I'll, 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 I'll have to go through the recordings, of course, because I, again, forgot to ask for someone who could not take but uh, yeah, I will do that. That's not I'll, a problem I'll make, at all. I'll make a little night here. Uh, yeah, that'd be great, actually. So I, I remember, uh, I typically do, but uh, I don't remember the exact context and the framing. So <laughs> it becomes really hard for me to communicate back. My first one has the chaos community worked with qualitative um, researchers or worked on any qualitative I can't spell qualitative um uh or worked on any qualitative metrics. This may be beneficial. If they have it. So, a, a lot of, I've seen this in the tech space quite a lot, especially in diversity and inclusion. And, and uh, you know, I think the best times where you can get um, the benefit is when you actually have a diverse set of, you know, people looking at both qualitative and quantitative. So, that's just a person that can. Yeah, I mean, it's valid feedback. I'm not saying it's not. Um, so I will definitely get uh, get this to Elizabeth and the rest of the folks um, and possibly even ask uh, Dawn about it uh, to see if there's something that I can get back from those discussions. And the first thing is just like, have they done it before? If they yeah. have, what's been the, the feedback? That's okay. Specific. Yep, I'll ask them. All right. Um, do we go ahead? Uh, everyone's questions have been answered so far. Okay. So, um, I um, so I did float the idea last time around of um. Uh, speaking to people within the region for collaboration opportunities um, in terms of, you know, partnering with them and helping them find their footing within the chaos project. So this is the update that I have. Um, and uh, essentially, FOSS United and, uh, sorry, essentially Code for GovTech uh, and Bytons, um, the company behind TikTok actually were very interested in the tooling that we have around metrics, uh, specifically the um, Ogre and the, not Ogre, uh, it's Ogre or Ogre, I'm not sure, Ogre and the um, Grimoire Lab tooling that we have, um, which helps us visualize those metrics that we have. And uh, they were similarly, uh, <clears throat> uh, they were working on similar stuff. So, um, and they were very interested in how to sort of implement this, uh, these tooling, um, uh, tooling, um, that we've developed, um, or have been donated to, uh, um, in their specific organization. So, uh, both of them were very interested, uh, in that, and they 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 were like, uh, let us you know get back to you after reading through the, uh, you know massive amount of info information that you've pasted through. So. That's one thing that's probably coming our way in terms of like patching them with the metrics uh, tooling bits. Um, Fast United is uh, taking a much more, uh, uh, you know, gradual approach, but and they want to start off with uh, the event patching bits, uh, wherein they want help. Um, rather not want help, they have agreed, uh, to sort of um partake in the event badging exercise because uh, they have a lot of uh, events that they run regionally and nationally. Uh, so this is this is one of the areas where they think it'll help if they have like uh, the badging bits um, 
you know visible to a larger audience and uh, it probably would signal um an integration with a wider open source community rather than being you know consumed or rather being sorry not consumed rather being stuck to a localized effort so that is one thing that they wanted to uh, explore and other options are coming up but it's not on the table yet we're still discussing but uh, these are the three areas um again i um these are based on my research um and people who i think i can partner with so if y'all have any any absolutely any uh, organization that you think would benefit from our project or who we should be collaborating with please let me know um and if you have any contact please feel free to patch me with them because these are based on my research and uh, my understanding of the open source ecosystem and uh yeah ondc is also um uh, uh one of those other projects not projects actually it's a national level initiative that's undertaken by the government here so yeah this is uh, uh this is another uh initiative or uh, that i'm going to be talking to over the next couple of weeks but i'm going to pause there and see if you don't have any yeah just put in this is that okay yeah, 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 please. I mean, every anybody, I because again, I don't have as many contacts. Uh, these are people who I know from imaged like conversations based on uh, based on the people I meet at various events. So um, if there are any people that you want me to collaborate or not me specifically, but the chaos project to collaborate with and have them integrated into our ecosystem, let me know. I can take up the mantle of uh, reaching out and having those conversations with them. Sorry, Manuel, I'm just going to make a comment and then I'm going to have to leave. But um, yeah. uh, so, Divya, one of the things that I want to do is to connect more people just generally across Asia who are doing events or open source or research software. So uh, I'll be wanting to reach out more generally. So I might, is that okay? Uh, because yeah, that's they, absolutely Those collaborations won't. That's absolutely fine. I have no issues with that. Uh, the reason being, um, a lot of the people that work in the open source ecosystem are eventually looking at the same goal because it's amorphous at this point. Um, and there are not a lot of um, people who can convey what they're doing in open source in a way that's sensible to the business side of things. So, and it's not just, that um it's also that you know that business side of things matters when you're talking about you know further investment and further proliferation of the ecosystem so uh so i the, think yeah. It, yeah yeah no for sure and i think that just goes back to this idea around impact and again yeah. when you're talking about impact so i did a lot of work at this at the university of melbourne having quantitative and qualitative uh yep. pulled together gives you gives your impact more impact if that yep. makes sense I, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I have to go. Um, but yeah, yeah, nice to talk to you again, Manuel. Sorry for talking too much. Um, but yeah, I'll see you. I'll try and see you. In, I may not be here the next time. So anyway. Not bye. a problem. I We will talk to you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Manuel. Um, so it's you, just you and me, Manuel, on the call now. So um. Uh, this is basically the collaboration opportunities that we've uh, explored so far. Uh, again, it's it's you as well. Um, I'm just going to, like, I know I already said this a while back, but if you have any uh, contacts with potential collaborators around the op in the open source ecosystem, I would very much welcome those suggestions. Um, and it would be great to have them, uh, you know, integrated into the ecosystem. Uh, sure. Like personally, I don't know uh, any you know, open source org. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, so, you do come to know of them. So that's what I said. So if there is like potential opportunity for collaboration with you, so sure, I will let you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, regarding ONDC, yeah, like, uh, is this the same platform which that government is proposing for? Open network digital thing, yeah. It is the yeah. it is not proposing, it's already on there, yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah, it is the same one. So yeah. I will be speaking to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh 
So that's the uh, that's a bit about collaboration. Uh, next up, we have uh, a new GitHub repo, which you already know about, Manol, because you just um, <laughs> you just closed an issue yesterday. So um, one of the things that um, I'm very keen we work on uh, before we like go mainstream. I mean, we're already mainstream, but uh, um more of us are on this call uh, is that we essentially get the charter up for chaos asia the reason why i like having a charter is it's like a document we can refer back to in terms of um what's the work we're supposed to do what are we aiming for um and what is the scope of our work um instead of like you know deviating from the actual scope um if we have that document as a reference point, it would really help. Uh, so this is uh, one of the uh, documents I came up with after last call. Um, I would very much love it if people can, uh, could, you know, go ahead and review this over uh, the next couple of weeks. It doesn't need to be an image thing, but it would help us um, solidify our scope and solidify our... Um, goal uh, in terms of what we are looking to achieve with this um, chapter. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, I will go through it once and suggest if any changes. Right. And uh, thanks to you, we also have an updated uh, um, uh, local uh, communities page. So thank you so much for that. And uh, we also have a new issue for creating the database of open source communities that uh, basically Roland suggested last time around. So um, if you want to take a stab at it, Manuel, that's great. Um, I'm also going to put it out via um, uh, like our Twitter and our LinkedIn uh, event, like maybe in the next couple of weeks again uh, to see if there's interest around help with that uh, because I think it's a very um, key thing to actually work on given the scope that we've defined. And it would be a very nifty thing to have to reach out to these people and these communities um, as not just collaborators, but as people who are working in the same space as us. So uh, that's, I think, the summary of my updates. I will pause now to see if we have any questions. Okay, then uh, no. I am good. Yeah, okay. Tell me, tell me. I'm yeah, sorry. No questions. Okay. So if there are no questions, I think that's the um that's probably the end end of our call today and i'll see you in the next uh next meeting that's in two weeks yeah sure all right then thank you so much and have a great one bye okay bye